In dying, Christ destroyed our death. In rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, ginger put on Christ. So in Christ, may ginger be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And those who have this hope purify themselves just as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we have gathered here on this afternoon to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Ginger Reed. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. And may God grant us grace that in pain we might find comfort, in sorrow we might find hope, and in death we might find resurrection. Let us pray. O God who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Give to us now your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that in living or dying our life may be in you, and that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Find a hymnal in front of you and stand. Turn to page 701. When we all get to heaven, verses 1, 3, and 4. Worship the Lord in song. Before I read the scripture, I would like to say a word or two. Buster and her died on Sunday morning, both of them. About, he died in 07, and she died in 13. The 21st of last month, she took communion for the last time. We never know, you know, when God calls us, but she was ready. And she said, I want to go. I want to be there. 
So the scriptures are on songs because everybody knows she likes songs. First one is 118.24 in the Psalms. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The next one is 66, 1 and 2. Make a joyful noise unto God all the earth. Sing forth the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. The next one is 80, chapter 81, or Psalms 81. Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. And then 100 Psalms 1 and 2. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And then the last one is the 23rd Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff that comfort me. Thou dost prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou honest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
A couple of hours ago, I got a phone call from the Reverend Woody Adams, who said to be sure and send he and Lucy to send their love uh, to the congregation and to the family. Wish that they could could be here, but we're here in prayer and, and in spirit. So I wanted I assured him that I would pass that on to you all. So uh, greetings and love and prayers from uh, Woody and Lucy in, in North Carolina. Woody talked about some, some things, and he talked about a special bond um, and friendship that, that he and Ginger had, and it went back long before this church began to, to be in, in either one of their life from Shelbyville days. And I think he said that uh, Ginger was 17 and he was 10, uh, so you can do the math. Uh, Ginger had a, had a contagious smile. A contagious laughter, a contagious sense of humor. Uh, I learned not long ago, though, that even though when you say in Winchester, Ginger, everybody knows who you're talking about. But anywhere else, they don't know that. When John and I, a couple months ago, went to see her at uh, Baptist Hospital, I went in, and as we customarily do, I said, oh, I need the room for Ginger Reed. They don't, we don't have a Ginger Reed here. I said, well, I know you do. I just talked to her son. <laughs> and, uh, and he told me the, this hospital. So I think I called you back, and, and they said, well, no, it's not listed Ginger. Uh, and uh, so, but if you say in Winchester, Ginger Reed, or even Ginger, uh, everybody knows who you're talking about. She had a ministry. And many people who were touched and affected by her ministry are, are here today. And you bear her handprints and fingerprints and love and prayers on you, and you have for a long, long time. Uh, I was thinking about it, and, and uh, her ministry, although not ordained, was even better. It was anointed. And her ministry among this church and, and among this people was an anointed ministry. Well, there's no doubt about that. And it continues to live on. So we come today to celebrate her life. We come in the hope and in the assurance that we have not lost her because we know where she's at. That we have not lost her because we will see her again. We have not lost her because she goes ahead of us to prepare for us. And in that coming day when we all gather together around the majestic throne, she'll be leading the singing, Dennis. She told us that day, and John will remember this, and she, I know she told many of you, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And she was. She made that decision Long, long ago. So in this transition time, as she has gone on, we who are here and remain, what about us? We know that, there'll be, that we will have a day like she had on Sunday and that we too will make that journey one day. And we look forward to the time when she will say to us, I just want to show you around just want to show you around and she'll take us and she'll do that to God be the glory for the life of Ginger Amen, Amen. Today, I want to celebrate the life of Ginger Reed. Many of us knew her as Ma Reed. All of us were touched by the music of her faith, by the music of her love, by the music of her life. And yes, we are sad. Yes, we do grieve our loss. But it is not sadness that has brought us here. What has brought us here today is the amazing and beautiful ways 
that God has touched each of us in our lives through the life of Ginger Reed. And what impresses, impresses me most about Ginger's life is the depth of the love that she shared. So today, I want to remember and I want to celebrate Ginger's life, the love that she sh had for life, the love that she had for God, the love that she had for her family, the love that she had for this community, and the love that she had for us, her purple people. For the love that she had for life and for God were a living testimony, an example of the way that life should be lived, and the way she loved her family, her community, <coughs> And each of us molded us and blessed us in ways that we are continuing to realize now. In ways that we continue to value. The memories of her love, the way her heart and her spirit and her music touched our lives is the richest of her legacies. So I invite us to remember the amazing love that Ginger Reed shared as she lived her life in our presence. And in remembering, may this today be a celebration of her life. Today I want to celebrate the love that she shared for her wonderful family. Ginger's legacy of love begins in Chevyville, Tennessee. Ginger was the daughter of Harvey and Ann Hoover. She graduated from Shelby Central High and she went on and she did her music education at Huntington College where she mastered piano and the organ. And it was in Chevyville, Tennessee that she met the love of her life. Anne and Harvey had been renting a room to the high school basketball coach. In 1948, a new coach came to town, Samuel Buster Reed. He came and rented a room from Harvey and Ann and that same room that the previous coach had rented and Ginger was living at home at the time when this handsome young coach came on the scene. And they fell in love with each other. And a year later, Ginger and Buster were married. She and Buster moved to Winchester and here she raised her family. And from their love for each other, from their love for each other, came her children, Dennis and Jan and Brian. Today we celebrate your mother, who with Buster surrounded you and nurtured you with her love, with her joy, with her wisdom, with her stories, with her laughter. Dennis Ginger expressed her love to you by instilling you the values that make you who you are today. And when she saw those values expressed in you, she expressed her pride to you. And you shared with me, you reminded her that the success that she saw in you was simply her loving hand at work in your life. Jan, as the relationship of parent to child matured into an adult friendship, Ginger laid such a deep and amazing connection with you that when you were living at home and coming home from work, you would think of what you wanted to eat, and there it was on the table for you. She filled your life with laughter and stories, and she loved those moments that she shared with you. And you felt her love in those moments, and we celebrate that today. And Brian, you experienced the strength and the power of your mother's love at a bunco game I understand. Uh, you were hosting a game for some of the football players at Sewanee that were on break and couldn't go home. And there was a particular young man that was very strapping and strong, and he was full of himself that night, and he was into the game of Bunko. And I understand that he worked his way up to table number one. And if you don't know anything about Bunko, table number one is where you want to be. That's where you make the big points. That's where you score. He worked his way up to table number one, and Brian, he took the team opposite you, and the bell rung, and you were on a, a winning streak. The first dice you rolled, you rolled a bunco, and you sent him back down to the bottom table. 
In his frustration, he jumped up and he came within inches of smashing Ginger's china cabinet and, and, and her beautiful china. And she let hurl an epithet towards you that I cannot repeat here in church. <laughs> and all five foot three inches of Ginger confronted that young man and said, I don't like what you call my son and watch out for my china. <laughs> These are some of the examples, a few of the many ways in which Ginger showed her love to you, her family. And we remember and we celebrate that today. And as you were rooted and grounded in her love, you matured and you took on spouses, Anita and Mark and Susan. And Ginger's love enlarged to receive and welcome your spouses to her home and to her heart. And from your families, Ginger became Gam and Buster became Paw Paw to your children. To Lee and Philip and Patrick. To Allison and to Samuel. To Stephen. To Joshua. To Patrick. So today we celebrate the love that Ginger shared with her husband, Buster, her children and her grandchildren. Each ball game that she attended and cheered you on. Each accomplishment that she celebrated with you. Each song that she enjoyed you playing on your guitar. These were all expressions of her love for you and we celebrate that today. In celebrating the love that Ginger had for you, I want to share a paragraph from an essay that was written by one of her grandchildren, Patrick. The essay is entitled Gam. And I read these words. Gam is a one of a kind individual. She shows, she shows so much of God's love to everyone she comes in contact with, even when she doesn't know it. She's the sweetest person I could ever imagine and literally would not hurt a fly unless one flew towards her Klondike bar. Glam, Gam loves Klondike bars, but she really is the nicest person I know. She would do anything to help anyone. I think that she would even let a stranger stay in her home if he or she needed a place to stay. Every time I see her, I can't help but smile. Every time Gam walks into the room, everyone smiles. It's as if she has the superpower of making everyone smile. Whenever, wherever she goes. In that paragraph, Patrick, I believe you captured the essence of Ginger, of her love. That's the Ginger that loved you as your mother, that loved you as Gam, and that we remember and we celebrate today. As we celebrate Ginger's love for her family, I want to invite us to celebrate Ginger's love for this community. When Ginger and Buster moved to Winchester, she took an active role in the community here. She loved this community by sharing her gift for gardening with the Franklin County Beautification Committee. She loved this community by seeing to the needs of the sick, by being a hospital pink lady. She and Buster were charter members of the Franklin County Country Club, and and she was a member of the Ladies Golf Association and she loved playing golf and she loved getting others involved. And my understanding is that Suzanne, she came up to you and being the mere novice that you are, you'd only played two games of golf and she got you involved in a tournament in which you all played together. <laughs> I, I won't mention the score, <laughs> but I will mention that y'all had a glorious time and shared lots of laughs. She became the first director of music for Franklin County Schools. In that role, she evaluated the musical skills of students and encouraged those who showed promise with her auto harp, and I remember her auto harp. She shared the joy of music as she taught many of us how to sing, and how to play, and maybe even most of important of all, instilled in us the love of playing and making music. She raised her family around the McDowells and the Eichards and the others that lived nearby. 
the last time I got to visit with Ginger was this past November. And she and I talked at length about how much she loved this community and raising her family here. And the bonds that she shared with the people that lived here, she expressed a sadness for people that did not have experience of living in a community like Winchester. But what I've shared with you today are just a few of the examples of how Ginger expressed her love to the folks of Winchester. Let us remember that. And let us share our memories with one another. And in doing so, celebrate the way that Ginger and her love touched this community. And as we celebrate Ginger's love for this community, let us also remember and celebrate her deep and abiding love for her church and the music of her church. For great music to exist, you need three things. You need a composer, an orchestrator, and a conductor. As a follower of Jesus and a master musician, Ginger was all three. But the music that she composed and orchestrated and conducted cannot be found on any manuscript or score. It does not exist in any music book or hymnal. The music that was her legacy is written in the heart and soul of everyone who wore the color purple and became one of her purple people. You see, we were not just purple people. We were Ginger's purple people. And the music of her love and her faith are written on our hearts today. As a composer, Ginger was the master at composing the music of community. In the Purple People, Ginger composed this amazing community where each one of us had a place. Where each one of us felt welcomed and loved and cherished. I remember every Sunday morning running up the stairs to get to the top of the education wing over here. When I made it to the top floor, I would turn to the left. I would go through the double doors. And there to greet me was Ginger with her beautiful smile. She welcomed me and sent me to my seat in the base section, and the adventure began. And for an hour and 15 minutes, we experienced the community of young people working together and laughing and singing our faith. And, you know, it didn't matter whether you had a great voice or not. You always had a place in this community of purple people. If you didn't have a great solo voice, Ginger had a speaking part for you. And if you had even a hint, even a hint of a voice, Ginger had a solo for you to sing. And if you played an instrument, Ginger had a place for you in the band. And at times, I remember when I was having a bad week or problems at home or school or there were struggles or just a general angst and drama of being a teenager. That was all forgotten and washed away by the love and joy that I experienced being in her choir. Another way Ginger comp composed community was by every year she joined the youth choir with the adult choir and we sang together a Christmas cantata. In that time, in that age, there was much discussion about the, gen the generation gap. Ginger made that gap non-existent for us by bringing the two choirs together. And it was in this experience of singing the cantata as a joint choir that many of us as youth found mentors and lifelong friends and encouragers in adults who welcomed us into the choir who welcomed us into their choir, and their choir became our choir. And I always remember the highlight. The highlight of that whole experience was when, and I think back, it's so amazing, when the youth and the adults sang together at the very end, the Hallelujah Chorus. That was a touch of heaven on earth. These are wonderful experiences that I'll always cherish and remember. We celebrate today how Ginger composed this wonderful music of community in our presence. And Ginger not only composed community, but she also composed for us identity. We were her purple people. I remember wanting so much to be a part of the youth choir. And when I first joined, Mom went out and she got my purple shirt. And she got my white pants. And she got my white bow tie. And I had an identity. 
I was a purple person. All of us who are in Ginger's Youth Choir, even today as we are touching 50 and 60, we will always be purple people. This is part of who we are. I can remember as many times as a young person being pulled to become something that I was uncomfortable with, or even worse, not knowing who I was. And I would look in my closet, and I would see that purple shirt and those white pants, and I would always remember that I am a purple person. For me, that meant you had a faith that was real, and you shared your faith through music, and with the members of your choir, and you lived out your faith by loving others. Today, I remember and I celebrate Ginger Reed, who loved us by composing a community and an identity for us that nurtured us during our youth and blesses us today in our memories. If Ginger was a composer of community and identity, she was an orchestrator of fun. Whether it was teaching the children's choir how to sing Three Dogs Nights, Jeremiah Was a Bullfrog, or loading up 50 teenagers with Jim and Joy Gallagher and Bucky Delane folks and Howard and Linda Counts and others that through the years would serve as her chaperones to sing our, our faith at other churches or telling jokes in the adult choir, Ginger orchestrated everything with fun. She made sharing our faith fun. She made serving others fun. She modeled for us the joy of living a life of faith, and it was amazing. The music that she picked out was exciting and cool and upbeat. She was ahead of her time as she used drums and guitars with contemporary arrangements before Amy Grant and Michael W. Smith and DC Talk or Third Day. And way before contemporary music became a part of the life of the church, I remember as a child seeing that her production of Jonah Man Jazz and how she had produced this giant cardboard well as a prop, and how the choir told the story of Jonah with such excitement that it became alive for me. And if she orchestrated fun, she also orchestrated confidence. As I was preparing to share with you today, I called and talked to some of my fellow choir members, and one of the things that kept coming up in their statements was, I never in my wildest dreams thought I could sing a solo. But Ginger gave me the confidence to do it. She was a master of instilling confidence into her purple people. She got us to disregard the nerves and to play our parts or sing our hearts out, knowing that what was important was not getting every note perfect, but having fun sharing our faith through the message of our song. So today, I encourage us to remember and to celebrate the life of Ginger Reed, who loved us and who orchestrated for us the gift of fun and confidence. And if she was a composer and an orchestrator, she was also a master conductor. And she conducted and directed us to learn how to embrace a faith that we shared with others and to embrace a faith that we claimed as our own and was our personal faith and a vital part of our spiritual growth and nurture. Ginger taught us that the best way to share faith was together as a community and to share it with fun, and to share it with excitement, and to share it in a way that people could hear with their heart. Those are qualities and values that I still embrace today as a pastor that she's taught me how to share a faith that makes a difference. And in owning our faith, she gave our faith a soundtrack. She gave our faith a score that got us through the years of, t of adolescence. I can remember in moments of great joy singing, with the voice of singing, declare ye this and let it be heard, alleluia. Or I can remember in moments in which I had let God or other people or myself down singing, Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Or moments when I struggled with the issues of social justice and morality, hearing the words, He felt the whip on the other man's back. 
she gave our faith in our teenage years the songs of faith to remember, to nurture, and to nourish us. And I celebrate that today in the life of Ginger Reed. The one final thing that I celebrate with you this afternoon is the life that she now has in Jesus Christ. You see, in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. For I go to prepare a place for you. And where I go, there I will take you. For in my Father's house, in my Father's mansions, there are many rooms. And I go to prepare a place for you. From the moment of Ginger's conception to the moment of her last breath, our Heavenly Father has been preparing a special room for Ginger, for Ginger Reed. And in that room and in that place, she knows no more pain. In that room, in that place, her body and the frailty of her body no longer defines her spirit. In that room and in that place, she knows the joy of touching the reality of love that we hope and dream for. In that room and in that place, she is reunited with Buster and family that's gone on before. And she joins the great cloud of witnesses that surround us today and that encourage us on. Yes, she's gone from our presence, but her presence did not stop. You see, through God's grace, Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death to end life and transformed it to a door, stepping into a new glorious reality in which we are at home in the Father's presence and which we join that great cloud of witnesses that encourages us. Patrick, you said in your, in your essay that one of your favorite experiences was playing for your gown and that you loved it when she put her head back and started tapping her feet to the music. Well, Patrick, I want to encourage you today that every time you play your guitar, every time you sing, Ginger is in that great cloud of witnesses and she has her head back and she's patting her foot. I want to encourage those of us here today, purple people, every time that we in our lives sing the song of faith that Jesus wrote into our lives, every time we love those who are unlovable, every time we share hope and community to a broken and hurting world, every time we seek to make a difference in someone else's lives, Ginger is listening to the music in our hearts and patting her foot and smiling with joy. Today, we celebrate the life of Ginger Reed. And we celebrate how that life touched our lives forever. And we carry her memory with her. And I encourage you in the days ahead, family and friends, to share those memories, for they are her greatest legacy with us. Amen. This time I want to invite Katie Bitson if she would come up and I'm going to close our time together by singing one of the songs that she wrote into our hearts. It's the Lord's Prayer. And Katie and I are going to sing it, but we want to invite you if you remember it and you want to join our voices, your voices with our voices, we invite you to do so and give Ginger, one of her first opportunities to tap her feet, put her head back, and smile in heaven. Thank you. 
sinners, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Congregational hymn is number 572, Pass It On. Reach forward, grab a hymnal, and stand to worship the Lord.
can say amen to that. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, we thank you for all with which we have been blessed, even to this day. For the gift of joy in the days of health and strength, and for the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in the days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and for friends, and for our baptism and the place in your church, and for all who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death, and rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for us. And as he taught us, so now we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not into temptation, neither us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In October of 1951, Ginger transferred her membership to this church from the First United Methodist Church in Shelbyville, Tennessee. As her pastor, today it's my duty and privilege to transfer her membership from Winchester First United Methodist Church to the church immortal and invincible and eternal. And we transfer her membership there, remembering all the good things and knowing that one day we'll join her there. We transfer her membership. Amen. Would you stand to receive the benediction? And now may the love of God, the presence and peace of Christ, and the power and the comfort of the Holy Spirit go with you this day and forever. Amen. You are dismissed. Ha, 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 ha.